Did you want to order food, or do you already know what you want? I'm oh, sorry. Know. Do I you don't know what I want. Oh, we don't know what we want. Sorry. Okay, I'll come back. Um, well, I'm gonna look. Yeah, go ahead and look. Uh, I actually might just want some fries, I guess. We only had one of these, but um, it's opposite. You'll start okay. over this way, sure. and yours is over here. Cool. Okay. Thank you so Enjoy, much. Guys. Thanks. Is that still uh, reading okay? Um, so anyways, we were talking about uh, specifically studying film. Did that help you in terms of your development as a filmmaker? And was it worth it, or do you feel uh, like... Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I think the, the, the main benefits of film school for me were meeting a lot of other people my age who wanted to make movies. Okay. And also to have an environment where you could make bad movies for four years and nobody would ever see them. If, if, if your plan is to just start as a PA and work your way up, yeah. then yeah, you could just get started on that right away. I mean, as a kid, I was not, you know, I mean, I would have said I was more into, like, math and sports oh, as really? a kid. Like, I, I don't think I was very much wanted to be an artist until later. Okay. Know? I managed to slip in at a time where there wasn't uh, an overabundance of these kind of movies. Okay. So the movie automatically stood out just because there weren't many of them. As people are becoming better at documenting themselves in their own world, like then there's less. I mean, early with my first movie, Kissing on the Mouth, that's all I was setting up. Like for 80 minutes, I want to accurately portray me and my group of friends and the things that we're going through. And I wasn't seeing that, you know. I mean, I was sort of like not. The movies that I was watching weren't doing that. Now there's a lot of things to it. Facebook does that. Yeah in a way is much more intimate than if somebody had made a film about them. So I'm less, you know, I'm just sort of less interested in doing that now, that everybody's doing it for themselves. Okay. So I'm, my, my films are changing a lot. The new stuff is, I would say, pretty different. The 14-year-old version of myself who's like laying in bed reading Filmmaker Magazine and sort of like dreaming of making movies for a living. Uh, my 25-year-old self who was then doing that, uh, was a little freaked out because then I was like, well, I don't know where to go. That was that was already the dream. I didn't have a dream beyond that. Okay. So then I didn't know what was next. I hadn't set goals beyond that. So I just had to reevaluate and and the process of making silver bullets was also a process of figuring out that I didn't want. I wasn't that interested in having filmmaking be even related at all to the goals that I was setting for myself. If I set my goal now to like be the best human being that I can be, I can spend the rest of my life trying to do that. But then what motivates you as an artist then? There's several things. Like on some level, some of them are just things I do for money. Mm -hmm. it, it's a job. On another level, it's things that I do for myself because I have something that I want to make. And then, you know, probably on a third level, there are things I do for other people because I'm interested in them or there's something I want to oh, collaboration I want to have with somebody or something like that so the mumblecore thing in terms of it becoming a, an actual label on what you and uh, a few of your peers were doing what was your reaction to that to that at first I mean did you feel like you were in a box or I thought it was the wrong we were all sort of joking coming up with dumb words because there I think we uh, we, like, Andrew Bujowski and the Duplass brothers and, and the people who made Four-Eyed Monsters and myself, like, we all recognized that there was something similar in the work, you know, I mean, we, without knowing each other, uh, we had sort of, were tackling the same kinds of things and, and making films in similar ways and things like that. Were you all reacting to each other's film then, since you didn't know each other, or how did that happen all at the same time. Well, I had seen Funny Ha Ha, and I'm not sure if, if the Duplass brothers or Aaron and Susan had seen Funny Ha Ha, but I'd seen Funny Ha Ha and really disliked it. I really felt like it wasn't, rep you know, I mean, it wasn't representative of me. Okay. As it shouldn't have been. It was representative of Andrew, right. you know, but like, I also felt like, well, if there's room in the world for that movie, then there's also room in the world for me to make something that I feel like is more representative of me. So I think I went home from that experience feeling really connected to those people and feeling like I was part of An instant something. community. Yeah, really. something that was happening in different places in the country, yeah. um, independently of each other, you know? And I've realized that the challenge is not making films now. Making films is cheap and easy, yeah. if you want to. 
the challenge has become getting people to see those films. And Mumblecore became a way for people to see our movies. You know, like by, by, by having this word that became a sort of a hook that journalists could use and people could latch onto, my movies got seen by a lot more people than would have seen them without the word Mumblecore. So I'm really grateful at this point. Even though it was annoying to me at first, now I'm like, wow, that was that was that was half the battle. Yeah, uh, I would be very hands off. Yeah, we we we'd roll for 30 minutes or something at a time. If I saw something that I liked, we might go do another take that was specifically talking about that. Okay. Like if we shot for 30 minutes and five different subjects came up, I might then do a second and third take specifically about one of them. Or something. Okay. And I would also need to get different shots and things. So I might redo certain things so that I could get a close up or so that I could get somebody's hand in coverage. I mean, I, I feel like as a filmmaker, if you can get a distribution deal through a distribution company, that's still probably your best bet. Mm -hmm. Unless you have enough money to advertise yourself distributed film. It's mm -hmm. almost like Radiohead, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. selling their own album. Yeah. It, everyone loved that, but it's like, yeah. well, wait a minute, they're still Radiohead they're and they were able to do that. Yeah. yeah, they play arenas. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the, the new model, of, because films are so cheap and easy to make, the new model is you make five or six movies and then your seventh one gets bought by a distributor. I see. Like, yeah. I think it's totally changed and there's like now this new sort of apprenticeship period that everybody ought to be going through. And there are choices that you're making as an editor and a director um, that I feel like might go unnoticed because yeah. people are too busy talking, you know. Well, I, I mean, I think in general for the, for the people who don't like my work specifically or Mumblecore stuff in general, like there there is... A, just a feeling that there are no choices being made or that these movies really are just like YouTube videos they're yeah. just like haphazard documents of friends um, but that's alright I mean that's that's not the end of the world if somebody assumes the worst of me or my choices as a filmmaker you know what I mean it's like I, I think the, the worst the worst thing in the world would be to spend my time arguing against critics of mine you know what I mean yeah. it's just like there's, it's totally pointless I'm just, a, I, I'm a filmmaker and I'm going to keep making films. Well, it's a different kind of, it's like a different style of performance. Yeah. That's like rooted in naturalism, but I, I still think of it as very much performance. I'm capturing the way people are responding to certain things at a certain moment in time. Like, mm -hmm. And that's what I like watching. I like watching the choices that they're making in that moment. I think LOL still stands up really well as like a... I think we were just digging into like really meaty territory with techno like the use of technology and that kind of stuff. Um, nights and weekends, I still really like. I feel like we there's an amount an amount of like real life trickling into that movie that's so interesting to me. It's hard for you to predict, but what do you where do you see yourself going now? I mean, where are you at right now? You. You're a new father. Yeah. Uh, you're living in Chicago, which you know it's not LA and it's not. Yeah. It's not even Seattle, maybe in terms of the film scene there. I don't know. Uh, but uh, what do you see yourself doing? And what are, are you working on projects right now? That. Yeah, I mean, I've already made like five movies that I haven't shown in here yet. I have this movie called Marriage Material that I made with Kentucker Oddly and and his girlfriend Caroline. Uh, that I'm gonna put next week. I'm gonna put it online for free. Um, cool. On Vimeo. On Vimeo. Yeah. Okay, sweet. In 2010, I made seven feature films. <laughs> I didn't so, know that. Okay. I mean, there was no time off, but but none of them came out until 2011. Okay. So it looks like this yeah. big gap when actually it was a super productive period. Okay. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. We don't have to have like a handshake or anything because it's not like that. So, um, but no, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'll be there tonight. So. Great.